Hello, my name is Helen Riddell. I'm Chair of the Science Committee of the Global Initiative for Asthma and a respiratory physician from the Woolcock Institute of Medical Research in Sydney, Australia. This video is about asthma assessment and management based on the GINA Strategy Report, which was published in May 2014. First, let's talk about how to assess asthma control. Asthma control means the extent to which the effects of asthma can be seen in the patient. It has two domains, asthma symptom control and risk factors for poor outcomes. Symptom control is classified into well controlled, partly controlled and uncontrolled. To assess it, ask the patient about the previous four weeks, the frequency of asthma symptoms and reliever use and whether they've had any night waking or activity limitation. The second domain of asthma control is about risk factors for future poor outcomes such as flare-ups, loss of lung function and side effects of medication. Uncontrolled symptoms are a strong risk factor for flare-ups. Other risk factors, even in patients with few symptoms, include ever being in intensive care for asthma, having major psychological problems, smoking and low lung function. You should measure lung function before starting treatment three to six months later for personal best, and then periodically, for example, every year. Next, let's talk about the general principles for managing asthma. The long-term goals of asthma treatment are symptom control and risk reduction. Ask the patient about their own goals too, as having a partnership and good communication are important for effective asthma care. Take into account the patient's health literacy that is, their ability to obtain and understand information to make appropriate health decisions. Asthma management involves a cycle in which you assess, adjust treatment up or down, and then review the response. Take into account the patient's symptom control and risk factors, any characteristics or phenotype that predict their likely response, practical issues such as inhaler technique, adherence and cost, their own preferences, and local regulations or availability of medications. Every patient with asthma should have a reliever inhaler and most adults and adolescents should have an anti-inflammatory controller medication. For the best outcomes, start controller treatment as soon as possible after making the diagnosis of asthma. Let's now go through the preferred treatment option at each step. For other options, see the GINA report itself. Step one is as needed inhaled short acting beta agonist with no regular controller. This is recommended only if symptoms are rare, there is no night waking due to asthma, no flare ups in the last year and lung function is normal. For step two, the preferred option is regular low dose inhaled corticosteroids plus as needed inhaled short acting beta agonist. For most patients, this should be the initial controller treatment. If symptoms are not well controlled on step two treatment, then before you consider a step up, you should make sure you check that the symptoms are due to asthma and check the patient's inhaler technique and adherence, as these are very common reasons for poorly controlled asthma. If a step up is needed, the preferred option for step three is low-dose combination inhaled corticosteroid long-acting beta agonist, either as maintenance treatment with as-needed short-acting beta agonist, or as low-dose combination beclomethasone formoterol or budesonide formoterol maintenance and reliever therapy to reduce the risk of flare-ups. For step four, the preferred option is low-dose inhaled corticosteroid formoterol maintenance and reliever therapy or medium dose inhaled corticosteroid long acting beta agonist combination as maintenance plus as needed short acting beta agonist. If asthma is still uncontrolled, the preferred option for step five is to refer the patient for expert investigation and for possible add on treatment. Let's now talk about stepping down controller treatment. One aim of asthma management is to find the lowest treatment that maintains symptom control and minimises risk and side effects. Consider stepping down once asthma has been well controlled for three months. Choose an appropriate time when the patient does not have a cold, is not travelling and is not pregnant. You can generally step down through available formulations to reduce the inhaled corticosteroid dose by 25 to 50% at two to three month intervals. 
Make sure the patient has a written asthma action plan and book a follow-up visit to check that their asthma is still well controlled. Next, let's talk about asthma reviews. How often should a person with asthma be reviewed? This depends on their initial level of asthma control, their response to treatment and their self-management skills. In general, review a patients one to three months after starting controller treatment and then every three to 12 months, except for pregnant women who should be reviewed every four to six weeks. After a flare up, the patient should be seen within one week. Asthma treatment is not just about medications. Every patient should also be given a written asthma action plan with self-monitoring of symptoms or peak flow and regular review. This substantially reduces the risk of flare-ups requiring urgent health care. Also consider non-pharmacological strategies such as smoking cessation or removal of occupational sensitizers where relevant. Finally, let's talk about asthma skills training, an essential part of asthma management. Up to 80% of patients cannot use their inhalers correctly. This contributes to poor symptom control, flare-ups and side effects. So check and correct inhaler technique at every opportunity by asking the patient to show you how they use their inhaler and comparing this with a device specific checklist. Then giving a physical demonstration of the correct steps and checking and correcting the patient's technique again. Inhaler technique skills training is highly effective. A two to three minute check and correct intervention repeated regularly significantly improves asthma outcomes. What about adherence? At least half of patients do not take their controller medications as prescribed. This contributes to poor symptom control and flare-ups. It may be unintentional due to forgetfulness or cost and or intentional, for example, if they don't think they need the medication or they are afraid of side effects. To identify patients with adherence problems, ask an empathic question such as, do you normally use your inhaler two days a week or less or more? You can also check medication usage from the inhaler date or dose counter or from dispensing records. Finally, just a reminder that asthma management revolves around three steps. Assess asthma control, risk factors, inhaler technique and adherence. Adjust treatment with medications and non-pharmacological strategies and a written asthma action plan for every patient. And review the response to achieve good asthma symptom control and risk reduction.